the Commodore had just come out and that was advertised as having this, you know, a lot of memory and it had a sound chip and I thought, well, that looks like something a bit more interesting than these other machines. So that's what I decided to get. One thing that people used to do at that time was, you know, used to look in the documentation and, uh, you know, get these registers, 8-bit registers, which had bit patterns to, you know, toggle certain uh, aspects of the, the sound. And, um, Sometimes you could like set two bits and get something completely different that wasn't in the documentation. Well, there were certain things on the SID chip that you could do, like the, the hard sync and the ring modulation, which is something that I knew about because I'd worked with synths. There were a few other, other things that you could do that weren't documented and you would just set a couple of bits and get a, a, a strange new waveform coming from it. And then I expanded it to try to use it musically which uh, that was quite a challenge because with it being um, a non-maskable inter interrupt there was only a certain you know short range you could do with it to change the actual pitch of what you were getting out of it. I had my little Casio keyboard <laughs> and my score paper. I always used to have these score paper like that big, big, uh, you know, proper score paper to write stuff down, which was, I used to work that fast. It was basically some musical notation splattered with lots of hexadecimal numbers, which related to, you know, the, the actual pitches and sound patches and all this stuff. <laughs>